All right, so I told myself I wasn't going to do a review on this model. This is the uh, Eugene Nano LR3 it's because it's um, eh, not particularly that interesting. Uh, I did post something on my Instagram asking people if they wanted to see a video, and some of you did want to see at least some kind of review, so I'm going to make a kind of a quick review here, cover the highlights, and we'll leave it at that because I'm going to tear this thing apart and put this onto a 4-inch frame, which should be an interesting conversion for a future video, but I wanted to at least show you guys what this looks like out of the box, how it came, and whether or not you really want to get something like this. So, it's a 3-inch quad, um, very similar in concept to the Recon 3 with the 18650 um, lithium-ion cell tray, but this one has two of them. So you have one on top and one on the bottom. And as far as I know, this is the only one that has this setup uh, with two batteries. So you know, they went with a 2S setup instead of a 1S setup. So they went with a lower KV motor. Yusheen branded uh, 1303.5 4500 KV. And it does uh, surprisingly fly on 2S at this KV on a 3 inch prop. Although you are in the 50 to 60 percent throttle range, and uh, it does have a 1 to 2s um, all-in-one flight controller board there with only 5 amp ESC. So again, it'll be interesting to see how this flies on 2s on a 4-inch prop when I do the conversion. Most of this frame is plastic. This camera holder, this little HD camera holder here, um, battery trays, all this is like injection molded plastic, except for down here, 3D printed parts for the landing feet so you're not landing on the battery that's here and uh, right here and then you have this little um, injection molded plastic part of the frame for the uh, GPS and the VTX antenna uh, the carbon pieces are going to be the front arm here one piece and then this back arm here that's also one piece uh, pretty thin and at this weight if you crash um, depending on where you crash if it's a, any kind of hard surface you're probably going to break an arm they're really really skinny as you can see there so this is not for freestyle or racing this is strictly for cruising around and they're pretty much at this weight that's all you're going to be limited to uh, pretty boring quad in terms of just you know cruising around that's about it um, really the only people that I think this is going to be interesting for are people that are only interested in flying for a really long time so the uh, question on flight time is going to totally depend on your flight style, the um, f I guess the flight conditions, whether or not it's windy or not. Obviously, it's windy. It's going to it's going to reduce your flight time quite a bit actually, and the quality of the cells you're using. So, uh, I do know for a fact that one of my viewers contacted me about this model, and says that it does not go get off the ground at all. So he's getting zero minutes of flight time. And it turns out he's using some sketchy um, 18650 cells. So I will link these down in the description. These are the ones I use, these Molly cells. I get them from, you know, it's called the 18650 Battery Store. Pretty good deal in these. I think I got these on sale somewhere at some point uh, several months back for about $4 each, I think. So they're not too expensive. It's a good quality cell. You need a good quality cell that can pump out enough amps to lift the weight of the quad. And if you um, source your cells from a sketchy place, there are a lot of fake cells out there. They'll say that they're like high quality Samsung or Sony cells or Panasonic cells, and they're just completely fake. And that's what it turns out what happened to the viewer that couldn't take off. He apparently went to some uh, site that claimed they had Samsung cells that could, um, or genuine Samsung cells that could, you know, output the current and it turned out they were fake. They just wouldn't, they were basically, the voltage sag was so high, um, it would basically go to like one volt within about uh, um, yeah, a, cu a couple of seconds of him throttling up, so basically it wouldn't even get off the ground. It would just basically just uh, sag out completely. So the, your flight time is gonna highly depend on the quality of the cells that you're getting and also the capacity. So these I think are only 2,500 or 2,400 milliamp hours. And I think if you want to get the advertised 20 minutes of flight time, you need something in the 3,000 milliamp hour range. And of course, those cells also cost a little bit more. I think they're also a little bit more heavier. 
Um, but yeah, that's the max. I think the max is around 20, 20 minutes on this setup here. And if that's your goal, if you want 20 minutes of boring cruising flights, um, yeah, this is right up your alley. I did not fly this with an Insta360 Go 2. You can put some sort of you know camera on here. They did not come with a mount. It did come with a screw for this. And by the way, this mount here is actually the same dimensions as the ones that come on the HDLRC and Recon um, mounts. So if you have a, a 3D print for one of those, this will fit that. That uses an M3 screw here. And it turns out a lot of the electronics in here are actually from HGLRC. So this motor, this 1303.5 4500K motor, is very similar to um, this basically the same size motor that came on this Moto Whoop that I reviewed a while back. This is also a ALS 1303.5 4500K motor. The bell is a little bit different, but in general the motor looks about the same. And then uh, this flight controller is different on this one, but the one in here is actually uh, looks like it's based off of this design here. This is the Zeus 5, which does 1 to 2S and has 5 amp ESCs. And uh, it's just a different color. It's like blue green instead of red, but essentially it looks like it's the same. And then the uh, uh, GPS is actually an HGLRC part. Can't see it here, but it's a it's the M80 GPS. And then this um, VTX antenna is also, I think, also based off of HGLRC part, the Hammer antenna, but they rebranded this Yushin. So Yushin is sourcing some of their stuff from other companies these days. So essentially this is kind of like an HGLRC, but with uh, two uh, batteries instead of one battery. And then of course you have the Cadex Ant antenna, a uh, Cat Cadex Ant camera up front. You do have to uh, be very careful in how you put the batteries in. There are some markings here, the plus there, Make sure that you, you know that the positive side of the battery goes in there. Otherwise, you will smoke everything and cause a fire. It's one of the downsides of this. They should put in some sort of battery protection or um, reverse polarity protection into these so that, that you don't have that problem. And what's interesting here is, let's see if I can get this to show up on camera or not. So on the bottom battery, the positive is in the rear, but on the top battery, the positive is in the front. So obviously that's how they're doing this so that you can get the batteries in series. So negative to positive to negative to positive. That's how you get the 2S setup. So be careful when you put the batteries in. And I am using the flat top batteries. Those work. I think if you use the button top batteries, it's gonna be a little bit too tight. And then getting these in and out is kind of a hassle. They do include some rubber bands. To, I don't know where you put this in here to hold the batteries in place, but I don't think they would, they would work in a crash. And you probably want some sort of battery strap or something to hold them in like here or maybe in the front here when you do crash because they will eject. While they are difficult to put in and out by hand in a crash, they will pop out for sure. Uh, so something to keep in mind. And then in terms of uh, like the GPS setup, the GPS rescue was um, not set up on this one. It was um, basically not activated. And the GPS never got a lock for me at any point. So I'm not sure if this is properly set up. I'm, I'm going to have to, when I tear this apart, I'll look into it. Because uh, I obviously I follow the wiring and everything. I'm not really sure if it's put on the correct UART and all that. If the UART's properly wired up. Or if it's getting power. It just sits there at zero satellites the whole time. And the M80 GPS is not a bad GPS, so I'm thinking that it's prob it was probably not wired up correctly. And so if you're getting this model, you will have to investigate that and probably get the figure out something to get the GPS working correctly if you're going to be doing some sort of longer range flying and far flying further away and you are reliant on the GPS to bring the quad back in case of a signal loss. They, this, comes, com this does come in different receiver versions. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't send me the Crosswire receiver version. That the Crosswire would tend to be in the front here. The, they sent me the plug and play version. So I just added my own XM Plus receiver. It had some three wires coming in the back when a plug. I cut that plug off and I soldered on this XM Plus receiver and I just um, attached it. And I just stuck it here under the VTX antenna wire and ran the 
antenna is under the motor wires like this. It's kind of sketchy. I, again, I wasn't planning on flying this for very long and not doing any kind of tricks or anything like that, so I was okay with that. And, and you see that it survived. It's not, it's not in any danger, but this is not the recommended way of uh, installing an antenna or the, the antennas or the receiver. You probably want to zip tie this down um, and also secure the antennas if you're going to be uh, getting this uh, properly installed. There are a few other receiver versions as well, but I think, you know, probably you're going to want something like a crossfire uh, antenna uh, or crossfire setup if you're going to be doing any kind of long range if you're going to be flying this for a long time. I think that's going to cover it for this one. Uh, as I said, I'm going to take this apart in the next video, uh, future videos, so stay tuned for that if you want to see this set up on a 4 inch in 2S. So I think that might be interesting, and I'm also going to try and get the GPS to work properly in that one. Okay, so let me just show you what this weighs um, with everything. So the drone itself, 90, about, you know, almost 100 grams, 99 and a half grams. And if you throw on two of these batteries here, so, you yeah, <laughs> know, 191 grams. So the batteries weigh, the two batteries weigh almost as much as the whole drone. So like I said earlier in the video, you know, this is really, uh, because it's so heavy, it's really limited to just cruising around and you can't really do any sort of freestyle tricks with this or acro. Um, and I think that if you do carry an HD camera in here, you are going to reduce your flight time even more. So I think it's 20 minutes without the HD camera. And you're probably looking at less than 15 minutes with some sort of an HD camera, depending upon how much that weighs. So this is really, you know, I think a very limited use case in terms of who this is for. Just for people that don't really care about freestyler or racing and just want to kind of cruise around and sort of explore and you know assuming they can get the gps rescue to work correctly you know you can get the drone back in case you lose signal but of course you know if you're going to be going flying further away i recommend going with something like express lrs or crossfire some sort of a long range link instead of like a free sky or fly sky something like that's going to limit your range and also how far away you can fly with this because you can fly further away uh, with this setup here because it has a longer flight time but again you know it is mostly going to be kind of boring flying you're just kind of cruising around and exploring and not really doing much beyond that so again mainly for people that are looking for the longer flight times and not much else okay that's going to cover for this video again stay tuned for the follow-up on this one i'm going to tear it apart you know, hopefully fix some of the stuff and stick this on a four inch frame um and we'll see how that goes so yeah let me know what you think about that project coming up down in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.